Everything in our life is a reflection of the beliefs that we have. This right here explains the cycle of how we work, our consciousness works, emotions work. It goes belief, belief fuels and is a meaning. Think of belief as a meaning we give something. It then creates an emotion that stems from the belief. There must first be something must believe to be true for it to evoke some sort of emotion inside of us. Does this make sense? So a rainy day, for example. What are some of the meanings you give to a rainy day? Peaceful. Come on, more, more. What is it? Depressing, okay. Relaxing, I see. Relaxing, depressing. Catch up, there you go. <laughs> These meanings, the emotion that is evoked from that, some people say, I don't, I don't give it any meaning. It just is. It's a neutral meaning. But nonetheless, the emotion that is evoked is dependent upon the belief and the meaning. And as you saw, even if in this group, there are many different meanings we can give to a neutral contract, a, a neutral idea of a rainy day. So you must first off believe something to be true to then have an emotion. Now, an emotion then has that of a certain feeling that you feel. And when you feel certain emotions, you then have thoughts that stem from that emotion. So the thoughts, sometimes there'll be thousands, there may be a hundred thoughts that, that are connected to just one emotion. So then you have thoughts, which then fuels action. You'll either take action or you don't take action. That's how you're being in the world. And that action then fuels a result, which then reaffirms the initial belief. So this is a cycle. And what some people do when you watch certain content, maybe even, sometimes it's a little bit more surface level. It's like you think better thoughts. Think better thoughts. And the challenge with thinking better thoughts is it's bypassing the beliefs. You can think I am, you know, you can think I am worthy or you can think I, like life is fair or whatever it is. But if there's an initial belief that is there that is blocking that, then what happens is that wins because it's deeper to the core. Is this making sense? Awesome. So belief fuels emotion, fuels thought, which has you take action or not take action, which then gets a specific result, which then fuels the initial belief. Now, if there's one thing that if I could give you that I think would really change your life from this point going forward, it's looking at the things that happened to you when you were a kid and reframing the meaning you give it. Up until 2017 or even 2012, I had the belief that in my life, it was a subconscious belief. I wasn't even, uh, even aware of it, but I had a belief that because the ex-stepmom was in my life from 7 to 15 years old and she was controlling and manipulative, I had the belief that I was always being controlled. Life wasn't fair. I, uh, woman also tried to control me. That was a belief that I had. And funny enough, there was always a woman in my life that was trying to control me in some way as a result of that. I can look back now and see, clear, see clearly really what that was. I was seen, seen through the lens of reality that said, Life was not fair. So from 7 to 15, the whole ex-stepmom situation, my dad divorces her when I was 15 years old. I all of a sudden have all this freedom. I'm allowed to have friends. I'm allowed to get enough food to eat. I'm allowed to uh, not have to earn school activities. It was a whole new world. There was also this weird anxiety that came from that. It was really trippy. I remember when my dad divorced my ex-stepmom, I went over to the house one time, and we were going to get a whole bunch of uh, like our clothes and stuff, and it was real dramatic, and she was yelling, and she was like throwing her clothes on the, the ground and everything, and there was a moment where I realized that even though we were free, there was something kind of scary about that. There was like, I, like prior to that, a daily like thing that we would do, my brother and I would do, is if the parents weren't home, if, if my dad and stepmom weren't home, we would like, one of us might try to sneak watching television. That was like a luxury because we weren't allowed to do it. So one of us would be watching the television with the finger on a remote that says previous channel so that as soon as someone came, we would push that button so that it was on the channel it was before, we'd throw the remote down and run outside and then continue working. Because normally we were locked outside working all day. That was like reality. But it was interesting because all of a sudden I have this ex-stepmom, or she's not there anymore, and now I feel kind of like, like scared. Like I knew what to expect when that was the case. I knew that even though I, it sucked and I didn't like it, it felt safe 
having somebody control my life like that. Now I'm allowed to eat food, have friends, and do all this stuff, and I feel anxiety. So what happened is I would attract people into my life after that that still tried to put that control on me. I was seeing, seeing through the lens of reality that life's not fair. Women try to control me, and even though I didn't like it, a part of me did like it. A part of me felt safe with it. It felt familiar. Familiar, which is similar to family. Almost the same word. So then what happened is after that, the first major like girlfriend, I had a girlfriend for four years, right after, like a couple years after that, who was jealous and controlling. And that felt safe and familiar. Funny enough how quickly this stuff shifts too. I broke up with her after four years, I was working at Nordstrom's and Women's Shoes. I broke up with her. Within the week I broke up with her, which is also a very dramatic breakup, just like my dad and mom's, uh, ex-stepmom's relationship was. It was kind of a dramatic thing, probably because of a similar pattern. Then I get transferred to a better shoe department at Nordstrom's. I went from Brass Plum Shoe Department, which is like cheaper, younger person shoes. It's commission sales job. I got transferred to Salon Shoes, which is designer shoes. More money. I was like, this is great. I go over there, the manager of that department was literally the same energy pattern as my ex-stepmom. She was controlling, manipulative, she was protected by upper management. It wasn't fair, but it was familiar. So here I am, broke up with the girlfriend. One week later, now I'm in a man I have a manager that's the same personality construct as my ex-stepmom. And then for years, we tried getting her fired. Like she, was, she would do so much stuff, she'd get away with it. She was protected by upper management. And we would go to HR, and then we'd get in more trouble. When I had my ex-stepmom, anything we would do, and we would talk about what happened in the household, if we got caught talking about something that wasn't fair, we would get in more trouble. So in a weird way, that nine-to-five job to me also represented the familiar energy pattern of feeling controlled, of not wanting to be in it, but it's just the way reality is. Is this making sense? It's familiar energy pattern dynamics. And there was a story there that I wasn't aware of. Eventually what happened is I learned meditation. I started observing my thoughts. And as I started observing my thoughts, I started to become aware of these subconscious stories. I started to become aware that I have a belief that life's not fair. I have a belief that women are trying to control me. And therefore, that was the reality I was getting. I started to question these thoughts. I started to look at these thoughts. Tomorrow we're going to go deeper into this too, but really a big, huge part of releasing the past patterns of your life is forgiveness. Because when I went through that process, what I realized is I went through a spiritual awakening. And my childhood, which had so much pain over me, I was like, why did I not have much of a childhood? Why did, or like, you know, a lot of freedom and stuff. I didn't have a lot of fun and stuff. I felt super angry about that. What happened is now I realize that that is something that actually served me. It led me to a spiritual awakening. The trauma that we've experienced in the past in our childhood leads us to a spiritual awakening many times. All of a sudden, I was grateful for the past that I went through. I was grateful because I had a spiritual awakening. So what happened is as I'm grateful for the spiritual awakening, what ended up happening is I found the space in my heart to forgive my ex-stepmom and what I realized, too, is that she was doing the best that she could with, from the level of consciousness she was at. I then looked, I was like learning more about the awareness within myself, and I realized her dad was a narcissist that treated her a very specific way, which kind of showed why she was the way she was. I understood it a little bit more. It didn't make it right. It didn't mean I enjoyed it or anything, but I was able to understand it, and I was, in a way, I found it within my heart to begin forgiving her. And in a way, I was grateful that it happened. No longer did my childhood happen to me, but then I realized it was happening for me. And when I did that, that's when my life really shifted. Within just a few, with, literally within two weeks of doing this, that manager that we tried getting fired but couldn't because she was protected by upper management, she got fired for something like really minimal compared to the other stuff that she got away with. She literally left my life as soon as I started and it started like healing. And it was kind of trippy because it's like, from one perspective, it could be a super ego trip to be like, was, it, was I the reason she, she left? There were 12 other people in the department. But who knows? The point is, I shifted. That shifted my reality. I had the ex-girlfriend for four years. I had that manager for three or four years. I healed it, gone. So 
The power and what I'd like to introduce, I'd, I'd like us to do next as a form of a quick exercise before we go into the main one, is write on a piece of paper. How many of you have journals? Awesome. Write down, there's two aspects of this. Write down a demographic, or, or this Venn diagram here. It's a Venn diagram. Two circles next to each other. On one side, we have what happened, and on the other side, we have the story about what happened. Write down what happened at the top of that Venn diagram of this side, the left side, and then on the right side, write the story about what happened. So where we get caught up is believing that what happened and the story about what happened are the same thing. Because what happened is a neutral thing. It is a neutral thing that many people give different meanings to. There is sometimes and many times a group consensus. We can all look at someone that's been through horrible things and go, we all agree that it was horrible. At the same time, there are some people that go through that experience that respond very differently because of the meaning they give it. Has anyone read the book, Man's Search for Meaning? It's a very powerful book about, some, about a man that was in the Holocaust and in concentration camps and how he was able to transform his life in so many ways and he noticed that the people that actually made it through were the people that gave it different meaning. They gave it different meaning to why they were in the concentration camps, whether there was a way out or not. That had a very powerful effect on how long they lived. It was very interesting, but him in the amount of crazy torture, him and his family watching every single person in his family die, him able to come up with a conclusion of understanding pretty much this concept that everything is about meaning and we get to shape what things mean. The challenge is that a lot of times we believe that we need to adhere to what things mean based on what our family tells us, our society tells us, our social conditioning tells us, our culture tells us. And until we become aware of what that is, it stays on autopilot. 